Hi folks and welcome to Truck King. This is the 2023 Ford Bronco Sport Heritage Edition. And I think the big question is, does this little crossover really deserve to celebrate that Bronco heritage? Well, that's what we're gonna look at right now. Powering this Bronco Sport Heritage Edition is a one and a half liter three cylinder turbocharged engine. It makes 181 horsepower and 190 pound feet of torque, and that is sent through an eight speed automatic. Now, this probably goes without saying, but I will say it anyways the Heritage Edition is really about the way this Bronco Sport looks. So, first of all, today we have it finished in Robin's Egg Blue. This is quite a standout color. I think it looks amazing, especially in the sunshine. Now, the other feature you're getting this Oxford White Grille with the red Bronco lettering. That's there on all the Heritage Editions. You're also getting the Oxford White Roof. Now, this is specifically paying heritage to the 1966 Ford Bronco when two tone was a really popular thing. I'll also mention too that having a white roof is also functional because it helps to cool down the interior of your vehicle on a hot day. So I like the white roof. That's also the safari style roof. You can see it kind of jumps up in the back to give you a little bit more cargo space. So when you go Heritage Edition, you're getting the styling, the white wheels, the safari roof up there. And now, of course, I want to stop right now and get you to go into the comments and let us know what you think of the style here on the Bronco Sport Heritage. So we've done this before, but it is one of my favorites. So let's see if we can stuff Steve in the back of this Bronco Sport. So before I climb into the second row here on the Bronco Sport, I will mention three top tethers here in the second row for your child seats and two lower latch positions down there below. I also want to mention these plaid seats. These are kind of nice looking and you get them in the back as well as the front. So now I'll climb in. This is essentially 37 inches of second row legroom. And I actually fit really well. I have loads of leg room here. This seat could even come back. And then if it didn't have the safari roof, I would have a lot of headroom, but getting the safari roof, it gives me loads of headroom. Again, I stand at six foot two and I have inches up here above my head. And that's not very often I get to say that in a second row. I think much like the Ford Maverick, Ford spent a lot of time making sure that its smallest vehicles, the Bronco Sport and that Maverick, they don't feel small inside. And that's what I'm getting here too. Um, absolutely a full size adult can be back here comfortably. The other thing I wanna mention, you get these kind of cool pouches on the back of uh, your front seats and then also the Molly webbing down below so you can attach all kinds of different bags or uh, totes onto that as well. So a pretty nice uh, second row. And now let's go look at the storage in the back. Looking at the rear end, you can tell Ford focused on enthusiasts and people who are out having fun with their vehicle. And this is just another one of those features. You get the pop-up glass. People with dogs always mention they like this to open it up for their pups while they're hanging out on the beach or whatever. But it also just gives you quick access in to grab something uh, that you need. So we close that, we open this, and you get quite a large storage space back here. And I'll pull out this tray real quick just so you can see the space and then I'll tell you about it. But uh, with this second row folded down, look at all that space and you do get rubberized matting on the back of your second row. That's part of the Heritage Edition package to make sure that if you're putting something in here that's wet or muddy, you don't have to worry about it. Now, this handy gadget here has multiple uses. You can put it in as a storage divider in two different spots. You can use it as a shelf that totally tucks in so you can close your hatch or you can pull it back and use it as a little table on the rear end of your Bronco Sport. So once again, I think Ford really focused on sort of that enthusiast minded person who's out surfing, hiking, camping, mountain biking. And uh, for all those different uses, I think the Bronco Sport's a winner. Now, the other thing I gotta point out is this safari roof. At the back here, you actually are a little bit lower than the roof allows, so the opening is a little smaller. You're gonna have to make sure whatever you're putting in fits in here, but once it's in, this opens up and you get quite a bit of uh, headroom up there, which is nice. And now, folks, here we are driving in this Bronco Sport Heritage Edition. And it feels like we're up out here uh, repping the UN today with our blue and white color scheme. Yeah, I hadn't thought of that till you mentioned <laughs> it, but uh, 
Yeah, very much United Nations. Um, so I mentioned it in the walk around. This is just the base three cylinder. Uh, I actually think that up until this point, we've only driven the larger two liter in the Bronco Sport because we've got a bunch of Badlands and the off road versions, mm -hmm. and they only get the larger engine. So I think the first order of business is one just step on it and let's feel it. It's okay. You know what? I mean, three cylinder, I don't know why, but I always am expected to be disappointed. I probably shouldn't carry that bias, but I do. And I feel like that power felt pretty good. For what it is, you know, it'll get the job done. Yeah, and that's sort of the key, right? It's just the base engine, so it should feel like enough, and I think it does. And it doesn't sound that buzzy, and it's not that loud. I'm always worried about those things with three cylinders as yeah, well. Yeah, however, keep in mind, if you want to tow anything with this, uh, you need the two lead. And that is true. The base Bronco Sport is good for 1,500 pounds. The Bronco Sport we're in here is good for 2,000 pounds. And then if you were to get the larger engine, you can do 2,200 pounds. So it's only a 200 pound difference. Difference. It's not a huge difference, but uh, that is true. If you do want to tow the most, you do need the bigger power. Well, I was hoping for more than that. However, yeah. well, we got to always keep in mind that, you know, the underpinnings of this vehicle are the same as the Escape. Right. And so you wouldn't probably expect an Escape to tow that much more. So. Yeah, exactly. So why would this, right? Exactly. And even 2,000 pounds is a PwC a fishing boat, one snowmobile, small maybe two. Boat. Of course, a small <laughs> fishing boat. But that's my point is there are still some recreational things out there that you could pull with that. Yeah, boat. yeah, a little gardening trailer. Yeah, that's fair too. So just so that. And, and, I, and I, think I, I think about that, Steve, because the one thing that, comes across to me with this vehicle is it it's utility based everything about it its design the way it's put together is about doing stuff yeah you know having purpose built vehicle for whatever it is that you're into um, which I really like and I particularly like the back end of this with the amount of storage it has mm -hmm. and the variations on the on the uh, uh, yeah with that loads, deck yeah the deck the load stops and then also, quite honestly, this back seat with the really low floor pan in here is probably one of the better back seats I've seen for a small vehicle. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. And then the other thing that comes across is just headroom too. And, and again, you mentioned utility. Well, it's a little box and a little box is always the best shape for maximizing space. So that's what they've done here. But that's what I noticed right away is my headroom in the back and in the front. You just have so much space up here, um, which is very nice. And I think what you said earlier is actually really important. The fact that you feel like it's a utilitarian vehicle, because these days, everything is being pitched to us as a utility vehicle as a vehicle that's ready for adventure mm. but but so much of it is just marketing right they take their regular vehicle put some plastic cladding and they and call it stickers. utilitarian yeah. <laughs> whereas bronco sport also has that branding don't get me wrong but it, it doesn't need it it just comes across that way because of the way it is and i think that is uh, definitely saying something positive about the design yeah, absolutely. It's the type, and it's also attracts that type of buyer. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, for me, because this is this appeals to me more than, um, say, that Lexus we were in not that long ago. Mm -hmm. um, because yeah, I can already see you know how it's going to help me in my day to day. Fair. So the last big question, and this was already hotly debated, so we won't kind of get right into the, the middle of this debate, was whether or not they should have called this a Bronco in the first place. Because a lot of people think, well, that's not really a proper body on frame off-road truck, so you shouldn't have called it that. On the flip side, though, I think we obviously see from Ford's perspective, why wouldn't you use the name Bronco, which has all of this heritage and history and tradition? Absolutely. And and so that's what this whole package is all about. So I'll ask you, Dad, again, as someone who was around when original Broncos were being put on the road, do you feel the connection? Does the heritage edition matter to you that you're somehow connected to this larger Bronco world? Or is it just sort of whatever? It's strictly a marketing gig. Sure. And I've said this before, when it first came out, if you buy this, you buy the Bronco Sport, and somebody says to you, so what'd you buy? You may once, one time, say Bronco Sport. <laughs> but for the rest of your life, you'll say, I got a Bronco. You just, you'll just do it. Yeah. And so 
course, we can't mix up this vehicle with the real Bronco. Yeah. But, you know, from a, like I said, from a marketing perspective, why not? Yeah, exactly. It made all the sense in the world to them. And then I think we can also look in the hit past and go, well, the Bronco 2 wasn't much of a Bronco either. But... Ne neither was the Mustang 2. <laughs> Fair enough. You know, um, but, you know, like like I said, it's, it's a whole different thing when it comes to describing vehicles. Uh, it's marketing. And so, whatever. Sure. Sure, fair enough, and if that matters to you, then great, but then more importantly than all that, Dad, even if you don't care about the heritage, this thing just looks really nice, and I'm sure that's going to attract No, I, I love I love the color scheme. I got to tell you, I mean, I was when I picked this up, I was like, damn, I really, I love that. Yeah. Um, many of you all know I've got a 71 Chevy Cheyenne, which is also a two-tone. I got white over green, and in the late 60s, early 70s, this was a, a, a very sort of, you know, popular color combinations where we did one color over another um, I, I love this I really do because yeah. of course then again I'm kind of a standout guy anyway give me an orange truck anytime <laughs> yeah I hear that you know so I just it's it's great I love it when they go back and they pull stuff out of the archives and they can uh, use it on a modern vehicle um, yeah I'd buy this Last thing I want to throw out there is the price. So here in Canada, this Heritage Edition, as it sits, $48,000. And I do appreciate it's a mid-trim. Ford didn't make you get the top-end trim in order to get Heritage Edition. They kind of sandwiched it right in the middle of the lineup. And of course, you can see the US price right here. So we're coming to the end of this one. And at the end of it, I feel pretty good about the Bronco Heritage Edition, the Bronco Sport. Heritage Edition. So you're doing it too. <laughs> um, you know what? It's doing what it intended to do. It looks really cool and it still has all the utility you want. Um, I'm happy that the three-cylinder EcoBoost isn't a disappointment. I don't know, Dad. I got nothing bad to say, really. Well, then that's new. Okay, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Nothing to complain about, but hey, maybe you guys got something to complain about. So please go in the comments. Let us know what you think of this Bronco Sport Heritage Edition. While you're down there, don't forget to uh, leave us that comment. Hit the like button. Hit that subscribe button. Hit join to become a member of the channel. And then come right back here to Truck King to see what we're testing next. See ya. Bye now.